Okay. Um, can you talk about this thing that, you know, artists are talking about where there's this 30 year clause that you get your masters back because, um, it doesn't make sense to me because you take, for instance, Michael Jackson bought the Beatles masters and they were upset. And I think some of them were still upset that he wouldn't sell them back to them or that, you know, they couldn't get them. Whereas if there was this 30 year rule, it would automatically go back to them. So I I'm confused on this 30, 30 year rule. And with your experience in the music industry, I just wanted to know your take on, on this. Yeah. I think that's a one time thing that will happen because of something in some contracts or something like that. Um, I, I, I never heard it. I'm gonna be honest. A lot of people talk it. So I'm not saying it's not factual, but it'll be a lot of rich old motherfucker broke, uh, slide and their families and all these motherfuckers would be rich right now, right? If that was true. You know, it would be a whole lot of artists from the from Motown and 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 um you know all these record companies from the sixties and seventies would would be bankrupt. You know, they, uh, Capital Records and all of them, they would be given share and uh, all these people with all the music from the 70s and the 60s, it would be over. If that was true, I got to get it. I'm going to do that. I promised y'all, me and John promised to y'all, that we're going to start doing music-related stuff. And so I'm going to finally start getting some entertainment attorneys on here and to reach out and explain stuff like that. But from what I know, it's not true. Uh... As far as master recordings, it could be something about writers or something like that, but I don't get it, don't understand it, don't know it, um, don't know it, but if it was true, trust me, it'd be a lot of rich people out there and all the death row artists. Then why would Snoop and, and M N R K and all of them want to own death row? Everything is 27 years old, right? 28 years old? Let's see, let's see, one dog. When did the chronic come out? 92? 92, yeah. 92? And so 30 years would have been, what, 2022? And so, and then how you split it up? How, how do you split it up? Do you, uh, you know, because these people had guest appearances and, and they had samples on there. That's what y'all don't understand. That's why I get mad at most of y'all and I don't understand that when y'all always asking about why this person broke? Why this person ain't got money? Why this person? Let me tell y'all a secret, y'all. We give Puffy a bad rap, me, Reggie Wright, and everybody for using samples. Sample King. Puffy, I'll write this sample of the music. Tell y'all something about Tupac album. A whole eyes on me. The Chronic. Biggie's album. All those three albums I just named. If you could give me an album worth of songs on there that didn't have some type of sample in it. Hmm. <laughs> I'll shoot you a t-shirt. <laughs> Keep your D gonna crack at me. He's like, well, uh, nobody want no fucking fake ass Death Row East t-shirt. Uh, but y'all put that in the comment section, songs that don't have a sample in there. Y'all go and start debating among yourselves in the comment section how many songs there is with samples. Y'all gonna be surprised at how much uh, Death Row sample, Bad Boy sample, all y'all favorite songs that are, are sampled in the 90s. And that's where your money come from. Your money come from, your publishing money and all of that comes from writer's credits. From the writer, 50%. From the producer, 50%. The hook on the writer's side usually get 15 of that. So it's like 35% really of a song that y'all hear that probably is not sampled because somebody really sat down and wrote it. But generally, that beat that y'all heard, give you a perfect example right now so y'all can understand what I'm saying. That song, my girl, 
Uh, yeah, did y'all know that Benzino, for those of y'all don't know, that's his daughter. Holly, Coley, what's her name? She got the hottest song out right now, one of the hottest songs out in the country right now. That song is a, is a sample. Only thing she making off of that song, off that, off that album, is the money from her performances, her shows. She ain't making no money off of that because they sampled 100% the of that song. But that's why we love her and we like it because we already have familiarity to that song. And she blew up from it, made herself a household name that me and John don't know. <laughs> I know it, I can see her face, I just can't pronounce it. She ain't making a penny off of that. But now we know who she is. Now we, she, she going to clubs and, and places like that and getting $15,000, $20,000 every two or three nights just to perform there, show up and perform that song. So, yeah, that's uh, stuff like that. That's how the guys from the 30s or 20 years ago make money because they making all of that money off of the song because of their writers, that producer. He loving her right now. Whoever produced that song back in the day, the, really, I even heard it on a commercial recently. That song is hot right now, it's popular right now. She brought it back, that, not her, that producer that brought it in there and put it on there and said, get on this track, blew that song back up. So that's how the game that I know where people from 20, 25 years ago made money. There's new stuff, we're going to have to get a, a lawyer or entertainment attorney or somebody to come to explain to us, but I don't believe it. I, I believe there might have been one crazy judge, one case law. Um, for the, the, the examples that I know Urban Flavor and people like that are typing in the comment section right now, telling me, oh, so-and-so got their album back after 35 years or whatever. <laughs>